all systems of reality are not physically oriented, you see, and some are entirely unacquainted with physical form. Nor is sex, as you understand it, natural to them. Therefore, I would not communicate as a male personality who has lived many physical existences, though this is a legitimate and valid portion of my identity. In my home environment, I assume whatever shape I please, and it may vary, and does, with the nature of my thoughts. You, however, form your own physical image at an unconscious level in more or less the same manner, but with some important differences. You usually do not realize that your physical body is created by you at each moment as a direct result of your inner conception of what you are, or that it changes in important chemical and electromagnetic ways with the ever-moving pace of your own thought. Having long ago rec recognized the dependence of form upon consciousness, we have simply been able to change our forms entirely so that they more faithfully follow each nuance of our inner experience. This ability to change form is an inherent characteristic of any consciousness. Only the degree of proficiency and actualization varies. You can see this in your own system in a slowed down version when you observe the changing forms taken by living matter through its evolutionary history. Now, we can also take several forms at one time, so to speak, but you can also do this, although you do not generally realize it. Your physical form can lie sleeping and inert upon the bed while your consciousness travels in a dream form to places quite distant. Simultaneously, you may create a thought form of yourself, identical in every respect, and this may appear in the room of a friend, quite without your conscious awareness. So consciousness is not limited as to the forms it can create at any given time. Practically speaking, we are rather more advanced along these lines than you, and when we create such forms, we do so with complete awareness. I share my field of existence with others who have more or less the same challenges to meet, the same overall pattern of development, some I have known and others I have not. We communicate telepathically. But then again, telepathy is the basis for your languages, without which their symbolism would be meaningless. Because we do communicate in this manner, this does not necessarily mean that we use mental words, for we do not. We communicate instead through what I can only call thermal and electromagnetic images that are capable of supporting much more meaning in one sequence. The intensity of the communication is dependent upon the emotional, <clears throat> the emotional intensity behind it. Although the phrase emotional intensity may be misleading, we do feel an equivalent of what you call emotions, though these are not the love or hate or anger that you know. Your feelings can best be described as the three-dimensional materializations of far greater psychological events and experiences than are related to the inner senses, that, that are related to the inner senses. I will explain these inner senses to you later at the end of this chapter. Suffice it here to say that we have strong emotional experience, although it differs in a large measure from your own. It is far less limited and far more expansive in that we are also aware and responsive to the emotional climate as a whole. We are much freer to feel and experience because we are not so afraid of being swept away by feeling. Our identities do not feel threatened, for example, by the strong emotions of another. We are able to travel through emotions in a way that is not now natural to you and to translate them into other facets of creativity than those with which you are familiar. We do not feel the need to conceal emotions, for we know it is basically impossible and undesirable. Within your system, they can appear troublesome because you have not yet learned how to use them. We are only now learning their full potential and the powers of creativity with which they are connected. 
Since we realize that our identity is not dependent upon form, therefore, of course, we do not fear changing it, knowing that we can adopt any form we desire. We do not know death in your terms. Our existence takes us into many other environments, and we blend into these. We follow what rules of form exist within these environments. All of us here are teachers, and we therefore adapt our methods also so that they will make sense to personalities with varying ideas of reality. Consciousness is not independent upon form. No, consciousness is not dependent upon form, as I have said, and yet it always seeks to create form. We do not exist in any time framework as you know it. Minutes, hours, or years have lost both their meaning and their fascination. We are quite aware of the time situations within other systems, however, and we must take them into account in our communications. Otherwise, what we say would not be understood. There are no real barriers to separate the systems of which I speak. The only separation is brought about by the varying abilities of personalities to perceive and manipulate. You exist in the midst of many other systems of reality, for example, but you do, you do not perceive them. And even when some event intrudes from these systems into your own three-dimensional existence, you are not able to interpret it, for it is distorted by the very fact of entry. I told you that we do not experience your time sequence. We travel through various intensities. Our work, development, and experience all take place within what I term the moment point. Here within the moment point, the smallest thought is brought to fruition, the slightest possibility explored, the probabilities thoroughly examined, the least or the most forceful feeling entertained. It is difficult to explain this clearly, and yet the moment point is the framework within which we have our psychological experience. Within it, simultaneous actions follow freely through associative patterns. For example, Pretend that I think of you, Joseph, in so doing, I, med I immediately experience and fully your past, present, and future in your terms, and all of those strong or determining emotions and motivations that have ruled you. I can travel through those experiences with you if I choose. We can follow a consciousness through all of its forms, for example, and in your terms, within the flicker of an eye. Now, it takes study, development, and experience before an identity can l learn to hold its own stability in the face of such constant stimuli. And many of us have gotten lost even forgetting who we were until we were once more awakened to ourself. Much of this is quite automatic to us now. In the infinite varieties of consciousness, we are still aware of a small percentage of the entire banks of personalities that exist. For our vacations, we visit and quite simply live, we, and we visit amid quite simple life forms and blend with them. To this extent, we indulge in relaxation and sleep, for we can spin a century as a tree or as an uncomplicated life form in another reality. We delight our consciousness with the enjoyment of simple existence. We may create, you see, the forest in which we grow. Usually, however, we are highly active, our full energies focused in our work and in new challenges. 